a few words of what we normally know as Fahia from the range of the Akabu. The reason why we read this is that to understand what a unique mantab we have been given in living Islam. Allah Tabarakul and Quran describes Yuriduna li yutfiru nur Allah bi akwalikum. Arabic language is unique, but what it means is that the whole world has gathered around that candle. On that candle, that flick of the candle is very small. When you have that one candle burning and you tell the whole group of ten people all together blow, and the chance of that candle continuing burning is zero. Because it will get blown that way, it will get blown that way, it will get blown that way, it's gone. When normally one blow is sufficient, and if ten people together blow, Allah the Warukala says that the world they see Islam like that candle. It's a flick. And because it's been made, especially in the time of Imtihan, Islam has been made to look like a very weak candle in our day. For which reason many, many jamaats get himmat and harij. And this thing we can blow it out just like that. Then you will have one group stand, another group stand, wealth is pumped, propaganda is pumped, everything is given, just blow it. As they blow and they blow and they blow, the unique light of Islam, it just carries on burning. And you understand, what a candle, how it stands. The more the enemy blow Allah, the work of says, Wallahu mutim munurihi. And not only this candle is going to continue burning, it's going to get brighter and stronger. In darkness around it will all die. When you see it happening in the world, it leaves a person saying, Subhanallah. Because what does one candle mean? Rasulullah said Allah has taken promise that at the turn of every century he will bring one person, one jamaat, one group, he collect a few individuals, a jamaat of individuals, but in the ending so few they are that compared to the whole world they one can. But he will make that few individuals stand up. And whatever harm, whatever propaganda, whatever nuisance, whatever mess an entire world of shaitani agents have caused that few individuals will put it all right. When you see that happening, you understand that this deen survives only because we have the hidden kudrat of the Zatul. So that few people that I want to speak about today because of the times that we are going through is two individuals who arose in the lands of Turkey. Turkey had for many years enjoyed what was called a sultanate, an Islamic hukumat, a khilafat. During that time to be on top of the world, to be the great chef, was very easy because the government was in support. And thereafter Allah Tabarukala allowed Turkey to go through that example of hundred years of imtihan, where everything changed. And so much effort, previously we spoke about it and everyone knows that the shaitani head in the form of Mustafa Kamal rose. And it was done in such a unique manner and so fast it left the land of Istanbul and Turkey like baffled, without an answer. So fast the shaitani elements practiced. The plantings of hundreds of years already went into motion so quickly that within 10 years, 20 years, the Khilafat was like brought to the ground. The burqa was taken out. An environment was made. And his salah in a land which was the Khilafat at one time of the whole Muslim world, in that land, the movies now would mock Salah. In the movie and the films, they would make scenes of a person performing Salah behind an Imam. And you find that the Imam is taking too long in his Salah. So that man in the Salah goes forward and he grabs the Imam by the beard, so the beard would be mocked. He would turn his face the right and say, make Salah, I'm getting tired, I have to go back to shop. And the whole Jamaat in the movie would laugh, that Salah would be mocked. And then the Burqa would be mocked. You would have like an open festival outside. You would get women walking with the burqa. And they would come in front and there would be a parade. And then it would be called the entering into freedom for those that were put in a condition of captivity. So the woman would walk front and a man would then lift her burqa. As he would lift it, she would be practically naked under. And then everyone would start clapping. And she has now entered into freedom. Schools were put up, madrasas were closed. Monafics were brought into the masajid, good people were executed, assassinated, killed, removed. 
The entire environment was made against Islam. At such a time, perhaps no one ever thought that in this land, Islam will still continue burning. So in the history of the Turkey, two names that feature who we will speak about very quickly. One was a sheikh by the name of Sheikh Ali Haider. He saw the entire fall of the land. Because at the time when he was about 45 years old, it was still the Khilafat. And he was such a unique Ali that he was a mufti of the four madhabs. To be a mufti, to give fatwa in four madhabs is not an easy thing. But his knowledge on the madhabs was such that when the time came when he saw the Khilafat fall, one day he expressed his knowledge in this manner. And he says that this deen of Islam will stay alive till the end. And he said, and if his enemy think that by destroying the books of Islam, they will destroy Islam, he said, I alone will rewrite the books of the four madhabs. <laughs> but not an easy sentence to say, he said it was. His knowledge of tafsir was such that at the time when the Khilafat was still there, Sultan Abdul Hamid would have a majlis with the scholars of tafsir. Sheikh Ali Haider was made to sit on the main chair. A Qali was told, read any ten ayat of Quran. There was no preparation, he could read it. And on that ten ayat, then Sheikh Ali Haider would start giving tafsir to the scholars of tafsir. Then they were allowed to question him on any point and he would give answers. That was his dust in Ramadan. Sheikh Ali Haider reaches a certain town. Allah Tawarqala was now going to prepare him. In knowledge he had reached its heights. And because evil was going to raise its head, to destroy evil, Allah Taala always used a bill of what is called the soul. A scholar who was a master in knowledge, and then he reached the heights of the soul, <coughs> Allah Taala made him the Muchaddid of the earth. Sheikh Ali Haider at the age of 45 was on this moon of knowledge. Allah Taala now sends it to a land distant from the land of Istanbul. Coming to that land, he learns about a certain great sheikh in this land, Ali Bazaz. And he gets some wrong information regarding the doings of the sheikh. So in that very town, which was the murders of that sheikh, Ali Bazaz, he gives a bayan. And at the end of the bayan, he makes a certain indication that even the actions of a man called Ali Bazaz, I do not find it according to the sharia. And little bit harsh words he said, and he ended was known that this is the Mufti of the Sultan. Because he said a word against the Sheikh of the people, one Muri took it very hard, many took it hard. So he goes to the Sheikh Ali Bazaz and he says that the great man came, but what he said regarding him? Sheikh Ali Bazaz says that that man, how Allah Tabarukullah melted iron for Dawood Allah will melt him for us. That night the Sheikh cannot sleep. He wants to write, he cannot write. He wants to read, he cannot read. He's in a cave fear, thinking the whole night, what did I do? And it comes in his heart that you attack a wali from the awliya. He should not have done that. The next day he goes out in search of the snake. The meeting takes place in this manner. And as soon as he sees Sheikh Ali Bazaar, he starts trembling. He falls at his feet and he says, I think I did something wrong. You have something that you have to give me. Sheikh Ali Bazaar then smiled at him. Understanding that this man is going to be used for lot in the world. So he says to him, I want you to go to a certain man and learn from him. He reaches that man, that man looks at him. He says, I want you to go to another place. There's one town. In that town you will find a certain street. In that street you will meet a certain man. Give him my salams and say, I sent him to you. He comes to the house, he knocks at the door, knocking, 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 thinking of the wrong place. He says, after a long time, one girl opens, young dog girl, he says, who are you? For him to be able to say, I'm so excited. everyone knew him. Now he's knocking in the dirty alley. He says, oh, you came to see my grandfather coming. She puts him in a dirty room. He says, I remain sitting there for about one hour, just waiting. My nurse is telling me, such a great man, what you came here for? Says, then I see a bent man walking in after one hour. There's no istikbar, there's no how are you, say what you want. Say so and so send me to Muslim and meet you. He thought you'd be like welcome. So this person says, What hope is there for you? You are coming to me. So the person says, But I'm a scholar, you call yourself an alim astaghfirullah. <coughs> so 
the person says, what's wrong with calling myself an alim? When Allah himself said in the Qur'an, the people who know and the people who don't know the message, you read the Qur'an. So he said, what's wrong with reading Qur'an? I'm not in halati, janabat. I'm not dirty, I'm not napa. So then the chef says, you know, if you were napa, you were in that state that you need ghusl, I would have sent you to my bathroom right now. You could have bathed and read Qur'an after. He says, but I find you so dirty that the waters of the oceans will never clean you. As he said that the man fell down, Chef Ali Haider, the beginning of his tarbiyah, just fell. And then the man smiled, he said, hey, I'm only joking, come on. He said, you go back, our meeting has taken place, I escaped it just for this. He laughed at him, he said, Lord, well, you go back. Send him back, then he sent him. When the Chef Ali Bazaz passes away, it's a long story, but Chef Ali Haider now is made the Khalifa of Ali Bazaz. Allah Taala took him so fast. Because there was a need for a mujaddi to be created. Sheikh Ali Haider now reaches the heights of the soul. And while he's climbing that ladder, he moves in the era of what is called Mustafa. And he sees the entire Islam crumbling. And around him, he himself is taken to prison. Why in prison? They have to write a plea. Because tomorrow you can either be executed. That's how it was. Every alim, they would have a huge case against him, although there was nothing. So he says, me and my two friends sitting in that cell, and now we are writing, filling in forms. So after a while, he slept. So when he woke up, he stopped writing. So the one person, he says, I saw a dream. All slept. So the one person says, I saw a dream. In the dream, I went in front to the man who gives money out. And I had two papers. I put it front. The man looked at it and he gave me one coin, but it was like scratched, broken. So I asked him, why are you giving me a broken coin? Give me a full coin. And then he gave me a full coin. So that person asked him, what do you think the dream meant? He says, what it means is that tomorrow I won't have to do Lord's work, you do the work. You will take your plea and my plea also. First the man in charge will want to hand over the death sentence, the broken coin. But he won't be able to Almighty Allah won't allow him. And he himself will not understand that he will set us free. So then that man says, I'm so busy writing my plea, what are you doing? You scratching on your bed. So he said, I had my dream. In my dream I saw my chef Ali Bazaar saying to me, that read, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina, the surah 33 times. And Allah will set you free. Why am I mentioning this to show when the help of Allah comes, Mustafa Kamal and his army could do zero. Inna fatahna. He said, I'm busy reading. Then there was a third one. He also woke up. So he had already written about 18 pages. He took it and he squashed it. So Shaykh Ali Aydar looks at him and he says, You know what? Forget your papers. Why don't you read Inna fatahna 33 times the whole surah? This will happen. You go free tomorrow. He said, I saw Rasulullah. You saw your Shaykh in your he said to me, tomorrow I think it will be nice if we have to start together. <laughs> Jafali Haider says that from the three of us, the two who were set free the next day, there was a case against them. They were supposed to be executed, they were let out. For the one who was executed, he said there was no case. The most they could have done to him was, they could have given him three years detention. He says that he accepted the dawah of Rasulullah so and he had to go. As for me and my friend, there was work for us to be done. We were let out. But for 25 years after that, he's put under surveillance. He can't talk when he wants to talk. So he's burning with a fikr. And how will Islam come alive? That this gift that we have in us, in the land of Turkey where there is no Islam, needs to be sent. So Allah Taala now lights another candle. That candle, what we, many of us might have seen this man, is still alive today. He's an inspiration for the world, a living Mujaddid, by the name of Mahmoud Afundi. Sheikh Mahmoud Afundi, many would have met, perhaps in the year 2005, if you went for Umrah. Or the year 2011, if you went for Umrah. In the year 2005, they said it was the first time the Haram had seen a Sheikh coming with 50,000 murids. And as they entered the Mataf, the Arabs were told, move. It will be chaos. But the manner those people make the off, 
So at that time the Puris of the Sheikh were told, and who is this man who could change 50,000 people in Turkey to put on the imama, to put on the beard, to put on the kurta, for the woman to put on the burqa in a land that was known to be nothing but secular. So the Murid would answer the 50,000 you see are only the ones the government gave permission. If you have to come to the land you will find hundreds and hundreds of thousands. One candle burned in the land of Turkey, in the era of Mustafa Kamal. It's not easy to understand, but think about it. One man standing, fighting the military, fighting the governments, fighting the schools, fighting the universities, fighting propaganda, fighting the media. One simple man going for Bayan to this town, going for Bayan to that town. He has no wealth to support him, he got no media to support him. He got no government to support him, he got no military to support him. Every day there is a fear that the government can pick up one thing of his, one word of his, and they can send him to jail, he can be executed. But Allah Taala in a period of 50 years makes one Mujaddid walk. He walks in the lands of Istanbul, and in the year 2005, when he has to show what he has brought for the world, 50,000 land in front of the Kaaba. As though he came to say, Oh Allah, this is what I produced and there are many, many more. The desire was to speak about Sheikh Mahmoud Afendi, but now time is almost up. So inshallah, tonight when we start the program, we will continue from there. And what was this man? Why I was mentioning this here is to make me, me and you understand that we have been given such a unique garden, the garden of Islam, where Rasulullah said, This garden, its gardener is for Almighty Allah. And in every new spring, at how we have our gardens, and every man who knows when the new month is coming, the new season is coming, he goes to look for his new flower. When autumn and winter came, that beautiful garden died. But when it died, he gave a message that don't cry too much, because next season I'm coming up again new beautiful. So the gardener just waited, he never despaired. He never said, if it's dead, how can it come alive? Now we've got a garden of Islam. Many a time when you look in the media, and it gives that impression that the garden of Islam is dead, the garden of Islam never dies. Winter comes on top. And when winter comes, Islam says, just wait a while, and you will see what new flowers you're going to take out. When those flowers are coming out, however, who's going to be those flowers? Allah Tabarukala chooses the youth of the next generation. For the youth of the next generation to be chosen, Allah Tabarukala looks at the heart of the father and the mother. When that parent has a cry, and oh Allah, I present my child also. Rasulullah entered Medina Munawara, the mother of Anas radiallahu anh. She comes in front and she says, I hand my child over to you. Anas radiallahu says, I became the khadim of Rasulullah for 10 years. No one would tell the mother that he, the Rasul of Allah, needs someone big. was a young boy, but because she presented him over, Allah tawarukala accepted him. For the next garden of Islam, how one one candle was used and how it grew. May Allah tawarukala make us those flowers of the next garden. Make our progeny the flowers of that next garden. Because it is the days of Hajj, and because it is the day of Jumu'ah, and because it's the time just before the khutbah, who knows when that dua will be heard? So everyone from it make this dua. And oh Allah, my progeny now, I also make them work for your name. I hand them over. And if you choose that flower of oh Allah, then choose it from my name. Allah tabarakallah, except from all of us. Let our hearts burn with this desire. Islam is going through revolutions everywhere. So a lot of flowers have to be chosen. The whole world is coming towards Islam. There will have to be people who will be Imams of the next era. Allah Tabarakula looks at hearts. If the heart is sincere, who knows who's to our Allah Tabarakula.